Let's take you to the North Gauteng High Court now, where uh, it's hearing a special entry application filed by advocate Zandi Mshololo. She represents accused number five in the Senzo Meiwa murder trial. Mshololo says the state violated her client's constitutional rights by not disclosing evidence provided in the second docket, number 375. Let's go to our reporter, Slina Lomasigani, who's covering court proceedings for us. Lee, a second postponement in just an hour today. It looks like we're hitting another snag. Why this, why this second postponement? Um, it's not necessarily a postponement, Maseko, as opposed to or just an a break for yeah. counsel to meet with the judge. Yeah, an adjournment uh, to meet with uh, counsel in chambers because um, the concern here is the manner in which, of course, the slow pace of this trial has been unfolding. You you, you would know that we're still on the state's first witness, Masako. This is since April this year. And uh, we now have an application, of course, which is well within accused five rights to exercise um, all his, um, you know, legal avenues in terms of raising concerns about um, the trial and how information was given um, or not given to his legal representative. So we were in the middle of submissions by the state, which is opposing the application for a special entry. What Mshololo is basically asking the court to do is just to note that um, she was not given docket 375 before the trial began and was given the docket in the middle of the trial, which means that her client's constitutional rights to be able to prepare um, adequately and an adequate defense to have all information present before pleading, before the trial beginning, that right was violated. That is what, is she, that is what essentially she's, she's wanting the court to note. And this application is done in, in terms of Section 317 of the uh, Criminal Procedure Act, and it's just really for the High Court to note this so that um, if there is a guilty verdict out of this trial, mm. then accused five would be able to raise this concern about um, not receiving all information bef uh, ahead of the trial, then they could use that as a reason in his appeal, possibly. So um, what the judge, I think, is quite concerned about is the fact that we're not getting to the ultimate conclusion of this application. Mm. Um, it's taking some time. We're having the state submitting um, documents um, in the last minute. We've had to adjourn just previously now so that the state could print out some emails. So what the judge was saying was that he has actually noted that Advocate Nshodolo did not receive all information um, before, ahead of the trial. So he has called counsel to chamber, chambers um, to really find a way forward because we do have Sergeant Tabo Mosia who um, has been warned and uh, was actually in court yesterday as well to mm -hmm. continue with cross-examination. Um, and I think what the judge is really trying to stress is that we need to continue with this trial because time really right now is of the essence. Let's take a listen. All time that we utilize here is precious, very, very precious. Um, and we have, I've listened to you, and I'm sorry that I'm saying this before even Mr. Tovane addresses court. But we seem to be busy with the obvious. Um, the issue is about the second docket not having been announced or made known to all concerned sooner rather than later. And already the cross-examination of Advocate Mshololo as against Sergeant Musia has been placing a trail around the second docket. And if that be the case, there's, there's a very big question about what are, what are we doing here from yesterday? What, what, what are we doing? Uh, Sli, um, clearly this is an indictment then on the state. If only now it's starting to uh, give documents to the defense. 
Yeah, uh, I think it's something that the defense uh, from the beginning of this trial has been raising in terms of the manner in which the state is conducting the trial. They have not been, um, you know, they're saying that the trial has just simply been unfair from the very beginning, um, especially with the fact that accused five um, only received the second docket um, in the midst of the trial. Uh, I remember during arguments yesterday, the state prosecutor, George Baloy, saying, look, uh, we gave him Shalolo two months to peruse docket. 375. So any kind of prejudice that she's alluding to has been eliminated. Um, but of course, uh, we know that Advocate Nshololo does not accept these reasons and um, has been um, painting a picture that uh, the manner in which this trial is proceeding just simply um, is a violation of the accused, accused constitutional rights, in particular accused number five in this matter. And I'm going to ask my colleague Joe Matlala to just show you that um, at this point, Sergeant Tabo Masia is here to my right, ready to take to the witness box as soon as uh, we can actually resume with this trial. You would remember two months back, uh, he was still in the midst of his cross-examination by uh, Zandi Lomshololo and, uh, you know, drilling into uh, the issues around um, what the defense believes to be a contamination of the, that crime scene. Um, also, just towards the dock, you can see the accused um, still seated there. Um, we have, of course, the media uh, in the front as well. But, you know, we're all kind of not sure exactly how we're going to proceed because mm -hmm. I think what Judge Marmela is trying to push for here is that can we just continue with the trial because he has said that I have actually noted the fact that there are issues with how um, information was given or not given to different counsel for the accused so I think it's a matter of can we just proceed today um, mm -hmm. and start getting to the crux of the issues, to start getting to the facts of the matter, um, you know, for the defense to not only defend the accused, but for the state to try and prove its case. Mm. And just lastly, Slee, I mean, just explain to me the dynamics around this uh, docket 636 uh, and uh, 375. Yesterday, the state was saying that uh, uh, the defense can use it during cross-examination, but at the same time, the NPA writing uh, uh, that email email saying that, uh, um, you know, it's still considering the evidence in that particular docket or that that docket shouldn't be considered. What are we going to do with this particular issue? Uh, two different groups of people uh, being charged in these two different dockets. And I think that's one of the issues that the defense in this matter is trying to stress is that, um, especially Titi Tobani, to quote him, he says that, uh, you know, basically what the, the state is doing here is a fishing expedition. Uh, you know, they don't want to tell us exactly what their decision is mm. on docket 375. In fact, uh, during cross-examination, they said that the indictment that was in docket 375 um, uh, was uh, uh, an opinion of a junior advocate and it had no relevance whatsoever. Uh, but we have seen in terms of the evidence that's been presented um, and what um, Shololo actually submitted uh, yesterday was the fact that in Docker 375, much of the evidence that we're seeing uh, unfolding here in court in terms of the photo albums, some of the statements that were taken, there are statements in Docker 375 uh, which contradict uh, some statements that are in Docker 636, which is the one that is prosecuting these five men. In in particular, a statement that Sergeant Musia had, had deposed um, in connection with Docker 375 contradicts what he has been submitting or what he submitted um, in court as well in his affidavit. So, uh, you know, I think what the defense is doing, and some would say doing successfully, uh, is poking holes in terms of the strength of the state's case against these five men. Mm. Uh, we're, we've already begun um, unpacking issues with how um, evidence was collected, how evidence was stored, how the crime scene was treated. This is where we are in terms of the trial itself. But now we have this curious case um, of Docket 375, which the state w did not want to even recognize or entertain in court, um, but was basically compelled to mm. um, because of the fact that uh, we have a completely different scenario. Um, we have um, an investigation that has a completely different picture mm. as to what transpired on that evening.
saying and what some legal experts are saying is that in fact what the NPA should have done is actually charge everyone yeah. and let everyone actually plead their case um, and see exactly who um, uh, who is guilty, who is not guilty, but also try to get to the facts of what actually transpired on that evening. We know that uh, another concern for the defense is that some of um, those who are charged in Docker 375 are potential state witnesses in this particular matter. Yeah, absolutely. Selena Lomasigane, live for us in the High Court in Pretoria. The defense trying to punch holes in the state's case, and it looks like it's going in their favor so far.